Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Live Wire. Mike Thomas with you. And uh, every year I get together with this guest we have on the line. I always say I'd like to get together with him more, and it seems like the year evaporates before we, we are, we're coming around to our, our annual uh, get-together. And that's what we're going to have today, our annual get-together with uh, uh, St. Charles County Executive Steve Ellman. Steve, good morning. Mike, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as I said, uh, we get together once a year and kind of get to talk about what's going on in the county. And uh, I know you've uh, just released the uh, the St. Charles County uh, report to the community 2017, the impact report, as you call it. And a lot of, uh, looks like a lot of good news in there, and we'll, we'll delve into that. But uh, just in general, your assessment of, of the year 2017 for St. Charles County. I think it's been a great year. Uh, I think um, good things are happening in uh, in St. Charles County. Uh, my concern is that uh, the region as a whole has not been as prosperous, and I, I fear that some of the things going on elsewhere in the region are creating a uh, 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 the the impression that somehow the entire St. Louis region has these problems, and uh, that's something we're going to have to work to overcome, and when possible, help help others solve some of these problems that are in many ways giving the region a black eye. Yeah, and I think it's a, a good indicator of that is the fact that uh, the communities to uh, to the west of St. Charles County and St. Charles County inclusive and in, in the western edge uh, are, are doing very, very well. But when you get closer to the east and, and get closer to that, that particular segment uh, that you're referring to, uh, it, there is definitely a, a slowdown and we're seeing uh, some, you know, the, the crime rate and uh, the, the, the economy in general. It just, it, it's like a completely day and night situation. Well, some of the bad publicity we've had nationally, you know, um, people don't think in terms of moving their business to St. Charles County. They think in terms of moving it to St. Louis, and when they look into St. Louis, they realize that St. Charles is a great choice. But I'm just afraid there's people that are crossing St. Louis off their list uh, and just figure that, uh, you know, we've got too many problems here. And uh, I think long term, that's a, that's a big problem. But in the short term, and at least in St. Charles County, things are things are looking really good. Well, and I think uh, movement like what we saw a couple of weeks ago with the announcement by Amazon and their uh, decision to move into St. Peter's with a distribution center, uh, that that could speak volumes. Uh, not, I mean, to the world and, and kind of give St. Charles County its own identity uh, apart from uh, the, the St. Louis uh, County and St. Louis City area, if you will. Well, I think, you know, we're becoming a real logistics uh, center, and I think that's great, obviously. Uh, as more and more e-commerce is going on, there's going to be more and more trucking of goods and products, and our location obviously makes, uh, makes us uh, uh, a likely candidate for, for these types of facilities. But that's, uh, just to give you one example here of a new challenge now, is we're going to have more and more traffic on our interstates going to these various facilities. We've got a serious problem. As you enter St. Louis County from the east, you've got the Chain of Rocks Bridge at 270, which just is old and isn't wide enough. And then as you leave the region, going, or leave St. Charles County going west, you've got just four lanes of traffic under the railroad track there at, uh, at Wentzville. And, you know, every afternoon there's a big backup of traffic there. I mean, if we're going to market ourselves as a as a logistics hub, we're going to need to be able to guarantee these people that if they need to get their product to a particular place at a particular time, they're not going to have traffic jams to deal with. And I know uh, from the county's uh, standpoint, you have partnered with various communities. I know you, uh, uh, the city in Wentzville, uh, city of Wentzville, and the county have uh, partnered uh, on a project uh, for an overpass uh, north of. Uh, um, of, uh, on, on Highway 61 north of Wentzville there. And, uh, you know, you guys are doing what you can, but there comes a certain point where uh, the state sooner or later, and you're a former state lawmaker, you can probably attest to this, they're going to have to step up and just bite the bullet and do something on transportation. This kicking the can down the road every session, it, it's just getting us deeper and deeper into problems. Well, a large percentage of the people getting off at Piney Road are, are residents of St. Charles County, and it makes a lot of sense for Wentzville and the county to work together with MoDOT on that one. Uh, we could contribute as well to a solution there at the at the railroad track in 70. You know, you got basically five lanes of, of traffic coming down into two lanes. And, of course, because it's a railroad track, it's you know, the new the new plan is to go over it, not under it. It would cost $80 million, uh, that's the price tag we've been given, 
but only 17% of the people in that traffic jam every day are actually St. Charles County residents. Those 17% get off at the next two exits. Uh, so it's not as much a, a local problem as it is a statewide problem. Now, we're willing to chip in and, and help at some point. But, yeah, I think MoDOT needs to, needs to realize that that's, that's a real problem for people wanting to go from one, state to one, one side of the state to the other. And it's just not a uh, that area you're referring to, not just a, a traffic issue, uh, you know, an inconvenience. Uh, there have been way too many serious and fatality accidents in that area because of the way the road does curve. And, and again, as you say, it just cannot handle the type of traffic it sees on a daily basis anymore. Well, it just it's going to get it's going to get worse because uh, the growth that is occurring is to the west, and uh, uh, it's something we need to start working on now so that hopefully in two or three years we could we could have it fixed. Let me uh, and we'll get back to transportation because there are some other topics I want to touch on there. But in general, when you look at uh, the county uh, as far as the a- uh, economic end of things are concerned, uh, how are you doing? I know it was a last year last year when we talked, it was a tight budget, but the, it wasn't beyond you know being manageable. Uh, are are things looking pretty good? Are you seeing a rebound economically in the county? Um, we are. Uh, it it hasn't really impacted. Um county government in a, in, a, in a positive way yet, and a lot of that is the increased uh, economic activity. A lot of it is e-commerce, and of course we don't necessarily uh, receive sales tax on that type of commerce, and our big problem is 64% of our, uh, excuse me, 61% of our budget is, uh, is uh, based on sales tax. And if you look at the sales tax increase numbers over the years, it's uh, it's a roller coaster, okay? It's a roller coaster, and it's based upon the economy. When the economy's good, sales tax increases. When it's when it's bad, it decreases, and so forth and so on. Except now we've got a new phenomenon. We've got uh, we've got times that are good, but the sales tax is not increasing like like you would expect it in the past. So now, even in a in a in a time of economic expansion, uh, our sales tax increase this year was like 1.8 percent well you know that that might cover inflation doesn't cover the extra 9,000 people that moved to the county uh, in this past year who we have to provide services for so that's becoming more and more of a problem we've got other other uh, other financial problems uh, 911 is a good example Mike you know how you know how uh, 911 is funded uh, well yeah, I, I thought it was through a telephone tax is it not it's it's through a telephone tax, but only on landlines. And landlines are becoming uh, the, going the way of the dinosaur. I, I've got one here at the office. I'm talking to you on it now, but I don't have one at, at home, and most people don't. So uh, you have a situation where a very few people who have landlines are basically uh, asked to support the whole 911 system, and there's not enough of them. So what happens is the county and and also cities have been chipping in. We. We spent over a million dollars the last three years just uh, subsidizing 911, and you know there's just um, you know the, the, there's there's several other areas like that. Road, you know the uh, the gas tax. Uh, the problem with the gas tax is that the rate has remained the same, and at the same time, cars have become more efficient, so there's less revenue. So there's there's just a lot of challenges in in, in the future. Uh, none of them are. What should I say of an emergency nature? But there are things that uh, that are going to have to be dealt with, you know, in the next four or five years, uh, or else we are going to have some 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 real issues. Well, let's take nine one one for instance, Steve, uh, because and I know this is something uh, you've been uh, involved with uh, for for quite some time. Uh, you know, the the state has talked about trying to fix that, but is that a problem in your opinion? Because each individual county usually has their own uh, governed nine one one board and nine one one system. Should it be the counties that uh, establish the taxes on the phone company, or as opposed to the state, uh, where it all goes into one till and then gets distributed evenly? What are your thoughts on that? Well, the problem with with doing it on a statewide basis, it's it's sort of a uh... It's sort of a socialist system, and and basically uh, the people in the more populated areas will end up subsidizing 911 elsewhere in the state. I mean that's what we do already on on roads and a lot of other things. Personally, uh, I would rather see us deal with it uh, each county on its own, and um, we'll just have to wait and see what the legislature does. That's 
That's that's one I uh, I'm not going to worry about because there's not much I can do. You need to talk to our legislators about that one. Right. Yeah. And and that's the thing anymore. The, the, things are getting so closely tied together between federal, state, and local. Uh, I, I'm sure at times uh, when you hear some of the proposals coming out of Jeff City, uh, you either breathe a sigh of relief or just uh, just hold your breath and, and pray that it doesn't go anywhere because uh, a lot of what uh, I'm hearing coming out of there anymore uh, could certainly impose uh, a lot more uh, mandates and, and unfunded mandates at that on, on local government. Well, the, you know, the unfunded mandates, uh, they may try to do that, but, you know, the Hancock Amendment basically says that they can't. Right. Uh, so we don't hope it, we hope it never comes to the point where we would have to have to sue somebody to make sure that, uh, that we're not confronted with an unfunded mandate. But, you know, the big thing about the Jefferson City is you can't get too excited about things that happen in January, February, even March. Because people put in bills that aren't going anywhere, and, and they get a lot of attention, but, uh, Now's the time people need to start paying attention. April and May is when uh, is when th- the really important things start to happen, and you start to realize which of those crazy ideas might actually be going somewhere, and uh, which ones will uh, you know will suffer a, a, a deserved death. Uh, so this is the time of year where you really need to start paying attention to what's going on in Jefferson City. Sure. On a positive note, uh, we had a news story last week, I believe it was, last week or two weeks ago, uh, for a, another year, and this has been going on now for several years running, your county is considered to be the healthiest in the state of Missouri, according to uh, one of the, the studies and polls that was out there. And by, by health, I mean just the, the overall picture, the, the lifestyle, and, and everything combined. Uh, and I think that speaks volumes as to the type of community that, uh, that St. Charles County has become and, and presents to the rest of the area. Well, our, our health department does a super job, and uh, and I don't want to uh, minimize the uh, their part in that success. But you know, uh, most of that is because of life choice life choices that that our uh, our citizens have made. And generally, we're healthier because our people have made some some better lifestyle choices. Yes, we still have alcoholism, and we still have drug abuse, and we still have domestic violence, and a whole lot of the same problems everybody else has, but we don't have them to the same extent. And to the extent we do have them, we've got a great not-for-profit community here that works and deals with all those types of issues. Uh, The CCRB, the Children's Resource Board, uh, does a great job providing services uh, for children, and they try to identify people that, that might have these potential problems and deal with that at an early age. So there's a there's a lot of um, a lot of credit to go around on on being a healthy community. But the most important thing is again people just making those those lifestyle choices, um, and um, you know kudos to them. Well, and just the, I, when you when I think about a county's health, I think about the overall picture as well, uh, crime rates and things like that. And uh, I was very uh, uh, just astounded. I was looking at your report uh, that uh, you had, and uh, there's a section in there for our listeners. First off, if you've not seen this, go to secmo.org, and you can look at the uh, the report. It's posted online. Uh, but uh, where you compare and contrast St. Charles County to St. Louis County and St. Louis City, and when you look at the crime rates in particular. The violent crimes per 1,000 residents, uh, 1.3 in St. Charles County, 19 in St. Louis City. That's, that's a phenomenal difference in, in what you're talking about there. And uh, it, I think that exemplifies why, if you look at a healthy community, the overall health of one, uh, that it, it shows why, why people uh, are, are happy to be a, a part of this, this county. Now, when you look at uh, some of the other things, too, the median income, is, is higher in St. Charles County. Uh, there are a lot of things, uh, I mean, this is growth that you and I would discuss every year. It's not unforeseen. Do you see it continuing, I guess, is, is where I'm getting at it. Because as the population continues to grow, uh, you're, you've got a great police department down there. Can they continue to keep a, a firm grasp on, on what they've been doing? Yeah, they can. And, uh, you know, what you just mentioned is a good example of what I was talking about earlier. The, the media doesn't talk about our 1.3. They talk about the city's 19. And, and unfortunately, people think that that's, you know, a regional problem, and it's, and it's not. But uh, it's important that we, that we work on that, not just in St. Charles County, but everywhere in the region. Our police department I'm very, very proud of. Uh, actually, this weekend, um, 
uh, they have to go down to uh, Dallas, Texas for one last uh, set of uh, interviews. Uh, Chief Todd will be there with several other people in the department. Uh, and if all goes well, they will receive certification from CALEA, which is a, a, a national organization that certifies police departments. This was a three-year uh, project. It took us three years. We had to redo all of our all of our uh, various protocols and all our various rules and regulations, and more importantly, we had to show them that we're actually uh, abiding by those rules and regulations. We're enforcing them. We're doing the right things. We're having the right training. There's only a few departments in the St. Louis region who've received the, received this certification, and we're going to be joining them. And I'm very, very proud of our guys uh, and gals uh, for doing that. You also saw the, uh, I think. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, the report here on uh, the percentage of our police officers that have at least an associate's degree, and you can see it's like uh, 77% compared to 45% in the city of St. Louis. Ten years ago, we went ahead and instituted a program to encourage uh, our officers to go ahead and get additional uh, education uh, in the area of law enforcement, and uh, we've had many of them go back and get their associate's degrees, some to get their bachelor's degrees. Uh, when they do that, they get additional uh, additional pay, and it's worked out well for everybody. the The whole police law enforcement area is where the county has the greatest liability. That's where we that's where we get sued most of the time for things that we do or don't do uh, in the jail, or on the streets, or when we confront a criminal. Uh, so the, the the better educated and the more our people understand the criminal justice system, I think the the better off we're going to be as a county, and the taxpayers are going to be in terms of not not uh, not having to uh, answer to a judge for what we've done. Are you um, satisfied? And maybe that's not the right word to use, but. Uh, the, the police department, what your officers are making. I, I talked to several other uh, counties surrounding you, and, and that's one of the big challenges for them is to uh, to be able to maintain uh, a, a, a solid force because uh, uh, of, of pay for police officers. It, it's not great anywhere in, in the state, uh, but uh, are you uh, are you okay right now with what uh, what the officers are making, comparatively speaking? Well, we were uh, we were until about a year ago. Uh, we were. Uh, very, very competitive, and then St. Louis County passed that tax increase. Uh, we're about 63000 for average pay. Uh, after passing that, St. Louis County went up to 68, almost 69. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're obviously going to attract a few more people than we will, but the good news is that uh, our 63 is still well way ahead of St. Louis City, which is at 56, mm-hmm. which, which we all know is probably part of their problem as well. True. The other thing uh, that I hear so much about in, in St. Charles County is your, your cyber safety uh, courses that you have and, and the cyber safety, cyber crimes unit that you have. Uh, I know that's utilized by not only St. Charles County, but by other departments around the area. Uh, that is really, and especially in today's world, has become a key component of, of public safety in, in the county. Well, it is. And uh, uh, I'm certainly not a cyber crime expert. I have enough problems just uh, dealing with my, my cell phone. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> You know, we, we actually go into the schools and talk to kids about uh, about cybercrime. And some of them are very naive about, you know, what can, can happen uh, on, their, on their cell phone. And we do a lot to try to make them aware of things that they shouldn't be looking at, things they shouldn't be accessing, and so forth and so on. So that's a, that's a whole brave new world there. Yeah, and, and again, I just think it's uh, something that... As as we continue to see technology grow, uh, that you're going to see more and more uh, enforcement in that area. Uh, be, even again on the economical side, we how many people try to commit scams and stuff, and uh, if we can stay on top of that and, and prevent it, uh, that's that's a whole other area of law enforcement that even five ten years ago that people didn't really worry about. Now you, you hear the term dark web probably mentioned more than anything when you're you're, you're doing things. It's just it's kind of crazy the way that that whole thing has changed. Well, those are the things we know about. Then there's the things that are out there we haven't found out about yet. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah, good point. Let's talk about Parksland. Um, are you are you continuing to see areas in the county grow? And give me an update on, on how the parks are doing there in the county. Parks are doing great. 20, uh, 20th uh, year now uh, for our park system. Um, people... Uh, 
uh, passed a, a use tax uh, 20 years ago to support our parks, and we're at a point now where we're getting close to having the same um, number of acres per person as St. Louis County does. Uh, we uh, made some purchases this year, the uh, New Milly Lakes area, which uh, many of your listeners may be familiar with. Uh, it's a beautiful. We'll have 400 acres there. We'll have a, a nice uh, lake with a, a home on it, which we're going to convert into a uh, facility for, for banquets and office uh, parties and things like that. I think when it's, of course, it's going to be, you know, we won't be able to do this immediately, but eventually I think that'll be probably the nicest park we'll have in the entire system. But the one that we're real excited about right now is the uh, is the Veterans Tribute Park, which is between Kisker Road and the Pittman Hill Road in the southern part of the county. And unlike our other parks, this one's actually in a in a suburban neighborhood. This was in a in an area that's unincorporated St. Charles County. But uh, it, it's, it's, it'll be more of a neighborhood park, but it'll still have some of the, uh, some of the same things that we have in our, our more rural uh, parks. And uh, we're real excited about the opening of that uh, this summer. One of the biggest challenges when it comes to the parks and, and in general uh, tourism, I guess, for the county is uh, you want to maintain your, your historic identity and yet provide amenities that, that uh, modern day users can use. You know, uh, the, the, and, and you seem like you're trying to balance it out pretty well. I think last year, as a matter of fact, if I remember correctly, there was a historic home down around Daniel Boone home that uh, was uh, uh, you guys started to begin restoration work on. And so you're trying to, to, to kind of uh, cater to both, if you will, the historic value as well as the future, aren't you? Yeah, that's the, uh, the, the Hayes house, which uh, uh, William Hayes was Daniel Boone's grandson. And, and this home was built just a few years after the Nathan Boone home where Daniel Boone died. Uh, we are totally restoring it. Uh, to its original uh, its original form, uh, it, it had been used as a summer home, and a lot of changes have been made. It's going to be a real interesting, especially if you're if you're interested in, in architecture of that period. It's 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 a great example of a of a, of a frontier home, and uh, it's in Madison Hill Park. Uh, it hopefully will be available within the next year for people to uh, to come in and see. And I know you, uh, you're, we, you and I have talked before. You uh, are uh, passionate about preserving uh, that history of your county as well, so people can see where you came from, so you know where you're going. Well, hopefully, we'll you know we strive to have the best of both worlds. In many parts of the county, uh, a lot of emphasis on history, and other parts of the county uh, were new, uh, new homes progressive things moving forward so yeah it, it's it's nice it's a nice county where you can you can you can have the best of both worlds what uh, when you look at needs for the county park wise uh, do you uh, do you have uh, goals to expand the park service even more I mean we just mentioned on you know some areas that are, are currently under construction and, and and you know are in the future but uh, any any ideas of where you'd like to see more parkland if you could indeed uh, have some more right now we're gonna we're gonna uh, emphasize uh, developing the parkland that we have. Now, if an opportunity comes up, you know, we have an opportunity to, to, to buy some, some more land at a, at a good price. You know, oftentimes people are willing to uh, donate land or don't, at least donate a portion of it uh, because there's uh, tax benefits for them. So we're always, we're always open to hearing suggestions on, on, on more land and, and, and better places. But, but right now, I would say, you know, we're uh, full speed ahead spending the money we have to try to develop the parkland we have and get all those parks open. Before we go to break, since we're in the, uh, the parks and rec area, let's, let's talk about the family arena a little bit. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, that, that's still owned by the county, correct? Still owned by the county. Last few years, done very, very well. Yeah, it looks like to me, like I've seen the number of events increase there, not just concerts and that type of things, but just in general. It looks like it's getting a lot more usage. Yeah. Uh, Bob Schnur is our finance director. In the last uh, last few years, he started taking that as his his, uh, his primary focus. And along with the, the people that are regulars down there and have been there for a long time, they've really turned things around. And I think... Uh, you know, it's it's a uh, it's it's a real lifestyle benefit for all the people in 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 the county, and also for the people across the river in in St. Louis County. I would say most of our events, there's as many people 
you know, when you get up there to uh, Page uh, Avenue and you've got to make a left-hand turn to go to St. Louis County or a right-hand turn to go to St. Charles County, I would say it's about 50-50. So that's not just a St. Charles County asset. I think it's a regional asset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree. And and again, uh, kudos to the the folks that had, uh, because there for a while, I know it was a touch and go when you guys first took that over, but it's certainly uh, been turned around. And, and so I talk to people that, uh, you know, uh, artists that play down there, and they really love the atmosphere down there. They Sometimes the, the, the oversized giant arenas just kind of, they're intimidating to them as well, and they just kind of like the uh, the coziness. Is I think the one artist told me that he, that you have down there at the arena, so that's good to see. Well, we're not we're not making any money on the arena, but that's okay. We don't make any money on our parks either. Uh, but it, but it is an important uh, part of what we think is a great lifestyle in St. Charles County. I was gonna, and again, going back to what we were talking about earlier, when it comes to marketing, how many communities and can go out and say, well, we also have a ten thousand seat arena where we can host events like this. I mean, that that has to be a great uh, marketing tool for you. Yes, it is. Yeah. Steve, we're going to take a short break. We'll come back. I want to delve a little bit more into highways and transportation. I also want to talk about uh, the Emergency Operations Center. If if memory serves right, you guys broke ground on that last year and a lot of other things. We're speaking with St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman this morning on our program, and we'll come back with more right after this. Welcome back to LiveWire. We're visiting with St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman this morning on the program. And we were talking about uh, parks before we went to the break. I just want to put uh, one other uh, kind of uh, caveat to the parks that folks may not uh, know. But last year, according to the numbers I have in 2017, 1,546,904 people visited St. Charles County Parks. That's a, that's a pretty incredible number, Steve. It is. We're very proud of it, and we hope the number continues to grow. Yeah. So let's let's move on to something, a project that I guess we're going to see come to fruition, and 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 uh, you know it's it's underway now, and that is work on your uh, county emergency operations center. This is uh, sounds like it's going to be a really state of the art facility. Tell me about the, this this facility that's under construction right now. Well, we uh, we spent a lot of time planning. We went to St. Louis County and looked at uh, at their facility, which is probably ten or fifteen years old. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, you build something like that, and then. Uh, you always, a year or two later, said, boy, I wish we'd done this, wish we'd done that. We listened to what they wish had been done on theirs. We went down looked at one in Springfield. We really put a lot of uh, a lot of time into the planning, and then we did it as a design build uh, with uh, Brinkman Construction, and that, that was another opportunity for us to really, really get in there and make sure that this is exactly what we need for our particular community at this particular time. But it's a uh, it's a it's a great facility. It's able to withstand a, 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 a tornadoes. A, what is it? A series four tornado. Um, right now, what it really does, it brings everything together in one place. Right now, we've got our emergency operations center in the jail, uh, in the basement of the jail. Okay, which isn't which isn't the best place for it. It certainly isn't. Uh, is a centrally located. Uh, we've got our communications in a building out in Wentzville. We've got all of our data stored in the administration building here. We're going to bring all this together in one place so it can be used efficiently in an emergency. You know, that's a lot of people don't uh, um, don't really ask much for gov- from government from county government. Uh, until there's an emergency, and then they expect us to be there, and, and, and we certainly should be there, and we should be there quickly and efficiently. And uh, we're going to have uh, everything together here where we can communicate and get the resources where they need to be. It's one of those things you spend a lot of money. You hope you never have to use it, but we will. There will be another tornado someday. There will be more floods. Uh, and when they come, uh, we're going to be better prepared to handle them. Yeah, this uh, for our listeners, it's a 30,000 30, square foot facility, is it not? Yeah, it's right behind the uh, existing uh, police department, uh-huh. and uh, we've got a nice campus there. Uh, all of our law enforcement, public safety people will be uh, will be right there in the same area. And uh, again, that uh, that that's going to help us uh, be more efficient in the way we operate. When you look at the uh, the governmental uh, offices and buildings, uh, once this facility is complete, uh, are you pretty set, or do you have other areas? That I think I think we'll be pretty set because you know those other areas I mentioned where these things are now will now be available for growth. Right. 
and and that's what people really you know um, like I said we're we're getting five to nine thousand more people in the county every year um, we've been able to um, county government really hasn't grown proportionally and we're actually if you look from the period from 2012 to 2015 at the end of that period we were actually spending less per person than we did at the beginning the main reason we're able to do that of course is technology uh, we've made our people more productive because of uh, because of all the technological assistance they, they now have um, if we didn't have that technology we'd, we'd probably have a couple hundred more employees now than we do so that's uh, that's good for the taxpayers um, but uh, it, it's something we constantly have to have to work on to to upgrade that technology, and that that gets a little frustrating sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I, I find out well we're gonna we're gonna need to upgrade this stuff, and it's like didn't we just upgrade it? <laughs> so, and, and they said, well, yeah, but it, you know things are getting better and better. Uh, yeah, well, that the computers are, are. I mean, the minute you take them out of the storeroom, there it's it's kind of like other things. They immediately, uh, it's like they're obsolete. It's a crazy thing. It really is. I I feel your pain there. Now, did I read correctly uh, that since 2015, uh, St. Charles County residents have not uh, paid property taxes to the general fund? Can you is that true? And can you explain that? Well, this is a this is a situation that uh, that goes back 20, 30 years. And as I mentioned earlier, well, sales tax used to grow uh, eight, nine percent a year. Um, and as they were doing that, we were getting additional sales tax revenue every year, which allowed the council to keep lowering the property tax to the point where three years ago we got it all the way down to zero. So, yeah, when, when people write that check at, uh, at the end of the year for their property tax, they send it to the St. Charles County collector. <laughs> but that money is most of that money is not going to St. Charles County government. It's going to our schools and library districts and, and and other and other other folks fire districts uh yeah we're uh, we've we've been very proud of that of course again the problem now is uh we've been able to do that only because sales tax continue to grow and uh sales tax is not growing anymore this is one of the interesting things going to be going on in Jefferson City the next few years and even the supreme court has a is looking at a case that, that's going to have a, a real impact on uh, uh, sales tax on internet sales. Uh, a lot is going to be changing. I'm not sure in which direction, uh, but uh, stay tuned. Yeah, and uh, Missouri is, is one of just a few states that don't have some type of uh, of internet sales tax, uh, like a statewide type thing, from what I understand. At least uh, that that was the situation. And uh, I, I've often said. Uh, yeah, and, and trust me, I, I'm like everyone else. I, I make purchases online. Uh, I don't mind paying my fair share, though, especially if I know that money is going to be coming back here somewhat in some form to help support the community that you live in. And uh, that's uh, I, I'm with you. I think the state's going to have to address that sooner or later because uh, this is not a I, I think many times people thought it was a fad. Well, it's gone beyond fad now. This is becoming a, the thing to do and it's going to be around for a while. And again, on the positive side, you're going to see a, a huge employment facility come in into St. Uh, St. Charles County as a result. But uh, it'd be nice to see that that sales tax jump up and, and help support the, the, the extra uh, impact it's going to have on your roadways and infrastructure and that type of thing. Well, it's not fair to the brick-and-mortar businesses that uh, their customers have to pay taxes and, and the inter- Internet customer does not. True. So I'm not, I'm not a big tax guy, uh, but we, the system needs to be fair. Right, right. So now uh, I want to uh, just, again, uh, kind of run over a few other things we've uh, talked about here with our, uh, uh, the, the report that's out. And I want to stress to our listeners, if you want to see this report or a copy of it, you can go to the uh, website at sccmo.org, and it's right there, right in front of you, and you, you can't miss it. Um, and you'll, you'll see a lot of information that, uh, that we've discussed here. When you look at the overall uh, shape of the county, though, and I, I know I asked this in a maybe in a different form when we started the program, but are you overall pleased with, with everything? I mean, uh, and you know, the economy in general we're seeing turn around. Uh, are you concerned that we're we're maybe going too fast on that front? Do we need to maybe uh, put on the brakes a little bit when it comes to to investing too much in economic growth until we're, we're guaranteed we're going to see this turnaround uh, sustain itself? Uh, I'll let the market make those types of decisions. Uh, 
personally, I, I, I don't, I don't see any any reason for us to uh, to pull back in any in any particular way. Again, when you look at at the region uh, compared to the rest of the country, we're we're not we're not doing that well. Uh, it's still a great place to live and work and raise a family, and and uh, we need to we need to work to maintain what we have. But in terms of population growth, in terms of economic growth, uh, we need to we need to redouble our efforts in St. Charles County uh, because, like I said, the rest of the region is certainly is, is, is not doing nearly as well as we are. Of course, one of the big challenges to doing that is uh, the need for money and. You talk to, I've got several folks that live in your county that work here for us, and uh, their big concern is uh, is taxes. Now, as you just indicated, uh, that general fund doesn't benefit a whole lot from it. It goes to uh, to other entities in the county, but uh, that's that's a constant balancing act, too. Uh, as you mentioned, that sales tax is so key and so important because of, uh, in order to, to keep those property taxes and other things uh, under control, isn't it? Well, that's true, but I think we've pretty much reached the, the limit on, uh, on, on sales taxes. I mean, they're... They're, uh, they're 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 getting up there, and of course you have to remain competitive with other other areas in the in, in the region. So I mean that's what I was getting back to earlier. Uh, we're going to have to find new and better ways to do things. Uh, as I said, we've been able to not grow government nearly as fast as the population is growing because we've we've used uh, technology, and uh, there there's other things that we're going to have to do because. Uh, uh, I don't need to tell you that uh, you know additional taxes are just not uh, just not popular. No, absolutely not. So grab your uh, crystal ball. Let's look at 2018 and and beyond. Uh, what do you look at, and what are you uh, what is on your wish list for St. Charles County as as we head uh, deeper into this year and into the next year? Well, I mentioned the first thing I, uh, that we talked about was that that whole I-70, I-270 corridor, which is so important to this logistics industry. Uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time down East West Gateway trying to convince the rest of the region that uh, that we need to be not only working on uh, a wider, better bridge at Chain of Rocks, but we need a wider, better overpass over the railroad there on I-70 so that we can take full advantage of all these logistics uh, companies that are they're locating in our county. That's that's going to be one of at the top of my list of things to. You still with us? Yep. Okay. So, you know, uh, one of the, I, I, as we're sitting here talking, I can remember way back when, uh, back when uh, the county charter farm or government came into play, and uh, you and your predecessor both, we talked about the, I think we called it the golden triangle. Is that still a very viable part of your economy there in the county? Uh, yeah, it is. But I mean, we've we've uh, we've pretty much outgrown the uh, the golden triangle. Winsville, Winsville is booming outside the triangle. Uh, uh, the uh, there's there's other parts of the county that, that are growing. Uh, I mean the, the the growth in Winsville has just been amazing. I think the last five to ten years. Yeah, I agree. It's it's incredible. And another area, and it, it, we're finally seeing it uh, bust open. It, it's we've, it's slowly been happening, but I think uh, with Amazon and other announcements, that 370 Lakeside area of St. Peter's, uh, I, I predict in another five years, it's going to be unrecognizable uh, with the type of growth you're going to see down there. Yeah, that uh, that facility came online, that area came online about the time we went into the, the Great Recession. So not much happened there uh, in the first 10 years, but it's booming now. Uh, another example, you know, outside the, the Golden Triangle is, 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 is Highway uh, highway N beyond the, the uh, page extension, Phase 3. Uh, we're uh, working, we, we've uh, provided... Uh, Assistance to MoDOT. They're doing a, uh, a study right now on what we need to do with with that road. You know, we worked for years and years to get uh, to get Page. Now all of a sudden it's finished, and now we 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 realize it should have been a little bit longer. But that's 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 been the history of the county. Uh, when I uh, was first elected uh, 30 years ago, the problem the the, the the problem with traffic was on the other side of the bridge over Nurse City, and people couldn't get across the bridges and get home to see their families. So we fixed that, and then what do you know, 10, 15 years later, the problem is out in St. Peter's around Mid Rivers Mall Drive, and there's a backup every day, and we keep working, we get that fixed, and now we've got a... Now we've got a, the backup out at uh, Wentzville. People not able to get under the railroad track. 
So we're going to fix that one too, and then after that, we're going to we're going to let uh, Warren County worry about Highway Seven. Uh, thanks a lot. We appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just squeeze that toothpaste down the tube. There, uh, it, it is. It's fascinating. Now, when you sit down and look, and you, you mentioned Page Avenue, we've had a few years now to to see that thing really in full operation. It's incredible. Uh, the amount of cars that use that and the impact that has had on your county. I, I, I mean, you, you and several others have predicted it, and I, I would have to say that you have to be a little proud to say, boy, were we right. I mean, it really has made a difference. Well, from the day it opened, the, uh, the number of people using uh, that Phase 3 was almost three times the, uh, the number that uh, MoDOT had projected. So they had no idea how popular it was going to be and how many people were going to use it. And, of course, I think that's seen, as a result, we've seen Interstate 64, that area, uh, blossom and grow. And as you said, just in general, it's, it's just, uh, it, it, in a way, it's, it, it's almost frightening, but it's, it's fun, too, to sit back and watch and, and think uh, just, again, 10 years ago, what, what the county looks like and what it looks like now. And the good thing about all of this, and we've talked about this before, is planning between the what the county uh, uh, council does and the, the planning and zoning boards, you've you've maintained your green space, your park space, and everything is being done as best you can with a plan now, so it doesn't get out of control and just go crazy. Well, you know, I, I was talking to someone about this just the other day. If, if you look at development of the county, you know, the city of St. Charles has been here for a long time. Uh, St. Peter's, you know, really started growing in the 1970s, and then O'Fallon, and then and now Wentzville, and, and I think each one of those cities has looked at the ones before and, and tried to learn something from what they did and tried to eliminate some of the mistakes that were made. And uh, you can just see that, you know, uh, when St. When Saint, Saint Peter's grew, it, 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 it didn't do some of the things that St. Charles had done. And then I think O'Fallon learned a lot from St. Peter's, and Wentzville hopefully is learning from O'Fallon, and uh, hopefully Wentzville will get, get it all right. Now, the fact that we're seeing these communities uh, basically connect, uh, you know, St. Charles into St. Peter's into O'Fallon, Lake St. Louis, Wentzville, and, and even Forestell and Wentzville are connecting in some areas when you look at the, the city boundaries. Does that uh, lessen or increase uh, some of the, the concerns and needs for county government? I mean, obviously, the, the unincorporated areas are, are, are maybe disappearing a little bit, but I'm sure that uh, makes, you know, makes you guys take a closer look at the overall picture of things so you can preserve green space and, and unincorporated areas areas and, and keep uh, some of that country life uh, going in, in the county as well. Well, a good example, a good example of that is the Gateway Greenlight. Uh, we've uh, received some federal grants and we've basically wired all of our stoplights in the county to one central location. And, you know, they used to synchronize the lights in O'Fallon and they'd synchronize the lights in St. Peter's. Now we can synchronize the lights uh, throughout the entire county. If you go down Mexico Road, you're going to go through three different uh, jurisdictions. Well, we can, we've can we centralized all that, and it, it not only makes it easier every, on an everyday basis, but if there's an emergency, we can reroute traffic, we can do some things. I mean, um, it used to be, you know, when, they, when, when you said you were from St. Peter's, that meant you were from that little uh, area right there along Highway 70 where the church was. Right. You know, when you said you were from O'Fallon, we all know what O'Fallon used to be in the same way with Wentzville. But like you say, everything's grown together. Uh, I think there's less parochialism, and I think people more and more thinking in terms of uh, how are the cities and the counties working together to make this whole thing work? Because you got people in St. Charles County who may live in St. Peter's who who work in St. Charles and, and go to church on Sunday in Wentzville. You know, I mean, it's it's just... Uh, it's uh, it's it's a more uh, uh, what should I say? Uh, I think I think uh, it's just a broader community, and I think people uh, are thinking in those broader terms. Yeah, certainly less tribal. I think is is a good way to less put it. Less tribal. That's <laughs> <laughs> but, the St. Peter's tribe and the O'Fallon tribe, and uh, yeah, yeah, now we're all we're all uh, we're all part of one uh, Indian nation now. There you go. Yeah, and I I got to tell you though, it's it's. It, uh, there's one thing I do see, and I don't say this just because you're on the phone. Uh, you talk to people from the, from your county, and there is a certain amount of pride uh, because of, again, you can look at your county and be very proud of what's taking place there. It's not a county that you have to be embarrassed by, unfortunately, as we indicated at the start of the program. I can't say that about every area around here. And as you said, uh, the national media certainly didn't help that picture. 
Uh, but uh, if we can reinstill that pride in, in adjoining counties uh, to the east of there, uh, I think you're going to see this area boom like we've never seen it before because uh, there are areas to be proud of, and we just got to kind of uh, let folks know that, hey, yeah, we are here. And if, if they could learn from your county, I think everything's going to be fine. You know, we don't spend a dime on advertising. And, in fact, when, when, when you know, a developer wants to put up a new subdivision out here. A lot of times, we have hundreds of people show up and say, "Hey, I don't, you know, I really don't want another subdivision across the street. I like that, you know, agricultural view and everything." So, you know, we, we don't advertise. People, people have come out here because they're unhappy with where they were before that. And a lot of the reasons, the two main reasons, I think that they've moved to St. Charles County and, and to Warren and Lincoln as well, is good schools and safe neighborhoods. And if we ever quit providing that, then they'll find somewhere else to go. So as long as we uh, do those two things, I think people will continue to come, and we'll uh, and we'll welcome them, and we'll do everything we can to make sure that uh, that they love our county as much as we do. I would agree. Steve, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking time out to join us, and uh, I look forward to uh, running across you, uh, run across paths here sometime this year, and uh, we can uh, talk a bit more about what's going on. Some exciting things, as always, in St. Charles County. And once again, to our listeners, I want to direct you to sccmo.org. That's your county website. You'll find this study we've been talking about, plus a lot more on there, including information about the upcoming election in April. That uh, You'll be able to find the, the ballot information there. Uh, Steve Elman, thank you so much. I appreciate it, sir. Hey, Mike, let's don't wait another year to do it again. I le- we, we say that. We're going to have to adhere to it this year, okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. Take care. All right. There you go. St. Charles County Executive uh, Steve Elman with us this morning on our Livewire program. That'll do it for this particular segment. We're going to turn it over to Steve. He'll take you up to the top.